uh, live um, because oh yeah, as, 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 we, as we as we as uh, we know that we were away on a hiatus for um, a nice vacation, which was Alaska. Yeah, so that's why we got on our Alaska shirts. Big you know? bear, yeah, big bear, yeah. <laughs> so. I have gotten so many questions about how was Alaska. How was so, Alaska? <laughs> we um, have done like different, um, a couple videos about like different places that we've been. So I decided to do our travel talk live and it's going to be about things we did in Alaska. So one of the first things we, questions we got was about what was the weather was like. So, the weather, I would say in Skagway, it was about 70, which was not bad because a lot of people thought that um, Alaska 70, would be freezing. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of the people that were in Alaska felt like um, that 70 was a little bit warm because mm -hmm. what I found interesting was that a lot of people that were from um, from Alaska or um, in Alaska were really not originally from there. They were uh, actually there for summer months because Alaska summer months are pretty much from like May to like August. August. Um, that's when they're, they get the warmer weather. But um, a lot of people that come from um, places like it was like some from Nevada, like Colorado, Utah, like places where it gets like super duper hot. They um actually come to alaska to get away from the heat which i found very very interesting mm -hmm. um so that's their cool off point um and then after like the summer months because that's mostly when a lot of people would visit alaska what is their warmer time then the people that were actually there on uh, like working during the summer um go back to where they're from because then it gets a little warmer um, there, like during the cold times and stuff. So I found that um, very, very interesting. Yeah, a lot of the tour guides. And stuff a lot of the tour there, guys. Yeah. A lot of the tour guides um, were actually from other parts of the United States. You know, and they that's that's their way of escaping <laughs> the big droughts and like the heat waves. And, they, and their families. And the, one lady, <laughs> the one lady was like, "Yeah, I get away from my kids. Oh, come to Alaska, man. Like, what?" <laughs> It must be some badass kids. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I was like, so that made me think, like, wow, like, um, during the summer months, would that be something that I would be, like, interested in doing? You just go there. If I'm going work. there, I'm going vacation. I ain't going there to work. Going there to work. Like yeah, a lot of people were, like, literally, like, going there to work and make, the, make that extra change because, mm -hmm. you know, it is money to be made. In Alaska, especially when a lot of people go there um, on their vacations or just a bucket list trip. Because it was a lot of bucket list people that were there, right? So, <laughs> you do so yes, not. Oh my God, you do it too much. You do it too much. So, um, it was a lot of like, so on our um, on our cruise, like we went on the um, Carnival Spirit. And it was one of our older ships, but there was a lot of... Um, People that were like retired, or this was like their bucket list trip, and what was um, amazing, what amazing, what was amazing to me was how many little kids. Now, there was a lot of kids on that cruise, like mm -hmm. young kids, like yeah. five, six, seven. But they were well behaved. I mean, you, you, you wouldn't even have knew they were on there unless you saw them. But they would. I thought. I thought that was really interesting. Dead. But compared to that cruise, compared to other trips that we've been on, I feel like maybe it might have been twenty to thirty kids on there, which was mm. which was not bad. I mean, they had like some teenagers. You well, know, remember like that whole? Teens. It was one. It was. It, I think it was a whole school. Remember? There were, yeah, but they were like, like yeah, they teen, were teenagers. teenagers yeah, 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 yeah. But but it was amazing how many little, little kids, kids was on that right, cruise. Right, right, right. You know, because right. you you would think like oh. Like parents ain't gonna spend five, six, seven thousand dollars to take their little kid. Yes, they was. Mm -hmm. But it was an adventure, so I think it was that. I thought that was pretty cool. 
Right, right, right. So, hello to the, those that are in. Welcome in, welcome in. Um, yeah, but that was a nice trip. I think that was a great experience for the kids. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, but I, I appreciated the fact that it wasn't not, not overwhelmed. Overcrowded. Either. Overwhelmed with kids. You know, because we've been on a lot of trips where the mm. kids was taking over. Like, mm. it was like, oh, my God. Like, ooh, is this a kid's trip or is this an adult trip? Um, but, yeah. So, anyway, we were talking about the weather. So, Skagway was, like, about 70 degrees. That was probably the warmest day. Like, you really could have had on, like, shorts and T-shirts because their sun is a little different. Like, the sun hits, like... In a way that you make makes it feel like it's so much warmer than yeah. it actually is. But it has no humidity. Yeah, so. that's right. It made it feel so much yeah. warmer. Yeah, because it felt like it was about 70, 75 right, or right. higher. Right, right. But it was a nice breeze. Right. It was warm. It was really warm. Yeah, that was that but, was that was scary. But way it part was of it, right. it was a, a, a different like a non humidity warm. You know what I mean? Right. So it, it really felt good. And actually, that was like in the downtown area, part of Scott Skagway, like near the port and stuff, where all yeah. the happenings is. Because we did like, um, we did actually did a lot in Skagway. So the first part of our trip, we we went through the mountains. We saw like the Black Lake. Um, we went through Canada. We actually went to the Yukon. Oh yeah, yeah, the we Canadian, to, the Canadian the, Rockies. We had to go through the yeah. Canadian Rockies through the border, and um, like you, you like so you needed a passport to do. And that you'd trip. be surprised mm -hmm. at how many lakes are in the mountains. Like mm -hmm. you, like where in the sand blazes this water come from? It ain't like like it's not like uh, you know you're like a main uh, body of water. Right. And then it pours into a little lake. No, nah, this is like in the middle of... Think about walking in the middle of the desert. Right. And then all of a sudden, it's a lake. Mm-hmm. But... And the water's flowing. Like, where in the world is the water coming from? Mm-hmm. You know no, what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. But it's all coming out of the mountains. Right. And it's like continuous water. Like, you're like, How? Yeah, we went through a lot of yeah, like it, it was, mountains and stuff where the water was just gushing all Remember that like, one? The water yeah. was a different color? Right. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They, was they, like, they, they, they were telling us uh, on the tour. And green, right. How the water, the color of the water, depending on what kind of rock was in the water. Remember that? Mm. So they were saying like the slate, I mean, uh, yeah, slate. Okay. Like if it was slate in the bottom or... Uh, Granite, mm -hmm. remember it would change. The water would be like a crystallized color, and it would be like bluish and green, mm -hmm. the different colors, mm -hmm. because of the different rock and stuff that was in there. It was, it was, yeah. It was awesome. it, imagine these two cups right here, one side of the water blue, and then the other side, the other side was like a green. But it, it looked like, like it was a fence there, like right. keeping the water blocked. But it was right. all one body of water. Right. Like even the, remember when we was in the uh, on the cruise ship itself, right? Where the water was two different colors, in the same you like on the middle of the boat, and you like, how could that be? Mm -hmm. God's creations are awesome. Man. It is. It is. Like how how does how do you mix two different color waters in the same ocean? Mm -hmm. It's the same ocean, mm -hmm. but the water's blue here and green here. Mm -hmm. And they touch each other, but yep. they don't mix. But they do not mix. I'm, I'm like, like come that, on, that man. I felt thought that was like so, so, so interesting. Yeah, that, that like, was. Yeah, that was. It pretty was like this. It's like the amazing things and the scenery. Mm -hmm. So, or at Skagway, so I had like a whole book of stuff that was like to do, like different adventures and stuff um, that you could do for um, all the different ports. So for Skagway. They have, yeah. let's see, they had the White Pass Summit Excursion, right? And that was, um, that was like a, a two, almost like a three hour um, trip. Yeah, I'm trying to, which one yeah. did you do? So that one, that one actually was like the White Pass train, like you uh, went on the railway, the railway and stuff, and it took you off. Through the mountains stuff. too, the mountains, on the right. ridge. Right. Like, yeah, the mountain. Like the mountains here, and, and you riding on the outside of that mountain mm -hmm. on the train. Mm -hmm. I'm like, nah, we ain't doing that one. Yeah, nah. That was I, that was, was cool. that was that was the um, White Pass excursion. Um, 
So they had a lot of like white pass trains. So if you didn't want to like um really get out and like do walking and stuff like that, they um they had a train that would just take you through and you would see all the beautiful mm. mountains and glaciers and the scenery stuff like that. Um then they had they had the the big nugget which is a sled dog. So if you were like into you wanted to go where it's like super duper cold and you get on sled dogs and it took you through and you got to ride um through the snow and everything. Um that but that trip was almost like five hours. Yeah, that was almost like five hours. Um they had like a street city tour where they had like the little bus that took you around and stuff like that through um downtown Skagway. They had that one. Um so the one that we ended up doing, we did the the Klondike Summit. Yeah, so, the Klondike Summit. Right. Yeah. So that was that was probably one of like the the best of both worlds, I would say, because when you look at all the excursions they had, they had so many excursions. So if you can see my book, I have a lot. Listen, I, right. I have them seen 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's like 15 so far. There's like 25 15, different excursions. Yep. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. There's 600 pages. Yeah. Six, yeah. yeah. So, so about 30. Yeah. 30 things to do in Skagway. So, like, it's like pick your poison, pretty much. So pick your poison and get that wall on it. <laughs> Pretty so much. They had, they had one. Remember that one excursion was almost six hundred dollars a person. Right, right. I so was like, who? Looking, nah. looking, looking at this, it looks like that maybe the most reasonable excursion was about seventy dollars a person. Yeah. That was the most reasonable one, and they went up as high as six hundred. Se yes, seven hundred dollars. Seven hundred bucks. Oh, that was was that the one with the helicopter? That was the dog sled. Oh, that was the dog and, and the helicopter. And the helicopter. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. one went up to seven hundred dollars a person. Per so, person. The yeah. excursions are nice. Yeah. You just have to pick what works for you because they have all different different types. So we did the um, like I said, we did the Klondike Summit. So and it was like a summit bait. So it took us through um Canada. It got on the summit bridge. Uh. That was quite interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Big suspicion. For her, I was like, mm, okay. A, a it was cool. Yeah. But she, 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 <laughs> she was holding on for dear life, though. I can tell you that. <laughs> she was crossing that bridge. <laughs> if, you look at, if you look at her YouTube page, or her YouTube channel, like and subscribe, of course. But if you go on her YouTube uh, channel, mm -hmm. and you look at the one where she was walking across the... The, 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 the summit suspension, suspension bridge. Suspension bridge. Suspension bridge. She yes. wasn't having it. Yes. So imagine a bridge that was maybe uh, it's about it, a little bit wider than between our two mugs. Yeah, it probably so was about two, two mugs, like, a little over two foot wide. Little, yeah. Yeah, about yeah. a little bit over two. Yeah, uh, maybe thirty six inches. I'll say three foot. I'll give, I'll give it thirty six <laughs> inches. Okay, but two people can barely pass each other. Right. So right. that's why I said thirty six, okay? Right. But you know you got. Right. Oh, it was uh, no. It was yeah. like it was like one of those things like yeah, you had to really like do sideways and by. let yeah. somebody go past you because that's how tight this bridge was and. And it wasn't swaying like it, it, left it or wasn't right. It was swaying, it was, but it was just like a yeah, dip, yeah. and it felt like really, really weird. And right underneath this bridge was this We're raging. Rapid. Rapid water. Yeah. Like the water was like they said it was like a five category. So imagine somebody trying to either swim in it no. or take a raft. They said the undercurrent a, a was so. It. Remember yeah. they said they stopped people from whitewater rafting. Right. In it because the current was so bad. Right. Right. And and now think about this. All of this water. Now we had a thirty eight hundred. Elevation, 3,800 foot elevation. Something like that. We were up in the mountains, like 3,800 feet up. Mm -hmm. So now think about this. This water is coming from above us. Mm -hmm. So we already at 3,800. Right. Okay. Right. I'll even say 35. Okay. Whatever. Right. right. Now, the mountains are even higher than where we are. So we're looking, 
if you looked up at the top of the mountains, you probably it's probably another say seven, eight hundred, maybe a thousand foot higher. This water is coming out of that mountain, mm -hmm. and there ain't nothing to stop it. Right. Okay. I mean, the water was so rough. You looking down, you like. There ain't no way in the world that somebody could live. Mm -hmm. If they fell in that water, mm -hmm. it's over. Yeah. Like they're gonna yeah. find you probably like at zero mm -hmm. feet, mm -hmm. but you're gonna be all broke up. You're gonna look like like broken cookies, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Because it, it, it was that water was that water was moving. That water was definitely, definitely. But wild. it was a sight to see though, because like nature is just awesome. Like you can even, uh, while we were going up uh, the mountain on the on the bus, mm -hmm. you can see, like, off in the distance, and I'm talking maybe thousand thousand foot in front of us, mm -hmm. where you can see water running yes, down the yes, middle of the mountain. Yes, strictly down the mountain. Like, like that was, it, it was it's crazy. Like, like, it wasn't just one. Yeah, like, yeah. everywhere you looked, if you could just see the water just coming out of the mountain. Yeah. And just, like, and you're like... It's crazy. Tricky. And it's feeding these lakes yes. in the middle of nowhere. Yes. Like like I said, just think about being in the desert. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you see a body of water. And you're like, okay, where's it going? Like it's just there. Like like somebody just took it and put it right in the middle of the mountain. Bam. Mm -hmm. And that was it. Right. So now, so we talked about like when we went on the summer bridge. Uh, hello for everybody that just came in. Um, we just, um, talking a little bit about our Alaskan adventure. Um, so like I said, that bridge was a little crazy. So, um, then another stop that we made, we went <laughs> into <laughs> Liarsville. <laughs> Liarsville. Liar, oh, that, Liarsville. Yeah. We thought it, we, we thought they were saying Myersville. Right, but it was called It was called Liarsville. Okay. Liarsville. Don't ask me to get these names from, but that's where it was called. Liarsville. Liarsville. And it was like being um That 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 place was pretty interesting. So when you ride through there, like you see like a lot of cabins and stuff. And people, uh well like Was that they, where the Eagles remember when they had the ball eagles up in the tree? That, that was Juno. That was just, you skipping ahead. We're so we're talking about Skagway right now. Okay. So just Skagway, cause we Liarsville. did so we did so much in Skagway. Yeah. Like so we 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 had it through Liarsville, uh, um, part of Alaska. Um, still in Skagway, but they have like a little like village called well, Liarsville. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Okay. And they had they had like the um the little cabins and yeah. like they were like so it was interesting like the way people lived and um. So you're going through and it's a lot of woods and trees and stuff like that. It's, yeah. like, it's like people actually live back here, right? Like real, real, like, like, like where's the where's real, the bears at? Real <laughs> modest living, real modest living. Yeah. So we, we went through there, um, and this they had this one little place. I guess it's probably where all the um locals go. Um, they had like a little teeny um, I want to call it a bar. I want to call it a bar. But you could get drinks and stuff there. Um, real modest, real modest. But they do like a salmon bake. Oh, so man. We, we we did the salmon bake. So we got to try but like But it some, ain't any old salmon. Right. Bake. So we got Plus. to try the be, the fresh the fresh salmon. Like they literally go out early, fish for the salmon, then they bring it back. And it, it's like a tourist attraction. So um people actually pay to come to the salt the salmon bake. And they gave you like a pretty like good selection. Like they have like all the different sides and stuff. Yeah, they, and they had chicken. They had they did they have chicken options. I guess for people that can't eat the seafood or whatever. Right. But they had like a but chicken. But the salmon. But the way they cooked it was like on a like a big open a big open, open pit, a open wood burning pit. It wasn't big. no charcoal. They used real wood, chopped it up, put it in this pit, and then on the top of the the the, the, the grill had to be like. Maybe twelve foot long, Man, it was big. and they had these big giant uh, raw iron. Foot? It was big. I don't it was know big. About foot. No, about twelve foot long. <laughs> you think so? Okay. And they, and they had these big giant iron flats, and right. they would put the salmon in between it, and think of a like a, a double flat like this. The you know the the salmon's in the middle, right? And they put the top on it, and they flip it over. Uh huh. But they didn't flip it. They they by hand. One guy on one side, one on the other side, and he's like ready. Flip, boom! I'm like, and listen, they had on overalls. 
They're like, ding, 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 ding. Okay, I'm sorry. But that's what that's what they, they were. They, they were country, like they, like they were like in the middle of the sticks. Right, and they put and they had like this kind of sauce, and they oh, put man. like this this family sauce on there and stuff. So it's definitely different. So like it, it's one of those um kind of things that either in the wilderness, like, right? It's it's like do you like the 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 salmon like grilled like kind of grilled grilled? It's fresh the, grilled, right Trust on me. the right on the Bones grill, or, and all. or do you or do you like it like kind of um you know broiled or you know it was baked grilled. in the oven so they this was like over over like a whole open pit um so yeah so that 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 place that place was really really interesting like i really want to be there like after dark no we want to be there after no, dark we ain't, gonna, we ain't doing uh, that them, them bugs was give me hitting. a gun i'll go but them, nah them bugs was hitting like quite listen different. them mosquitoes they had were, razor teeth they were out there they were hitting kind of different um so yeah we spent we spent probably what two three hours out there yeah. whatever um yeah so they had a nice little cute um shop out there so um it's like it's definitely touristy because I can't imagine like everybody um just you know hanging out there. You want to hang out? You want to hang out? Probably maybe the little bar area or whatever, but um not just to be like hanging out because they had like a little gift shop and stuff, which really had some interesting stuff. Yeah, yeah. They, I like the fact that they had like a lot of stuff from like the Indian reservation yeah, and hand, stuff like that. They were very, yeah. very, very um unique and handmade stuff. <clears throat> um, so then I say from there we went back into. Back into town after like doing the bridge and all that stuff, we went back into town, and we um walked around downtown. That was interesting because they had some fabulous shops, right? So that leads me to some of the things to do, things to do in Skagway. Okay, so they have um like for the local places, like if you want to eat. So we tried the Skagway Fish Market. Oh the man, fish company, let me, hold say. up. Let me try to tell you about this <laughs> fish market. Right? Now it was nice. It was a little cute thing right there on the on the pier. Mm -hmm. Like you can look out and see the cruise ship, right? Mm -hmm. So this one over here. Oh baby, um, let's get the. Uh, was that snow crab leg? No, not the snow king, crab. King crab. The Alaskan king crab. Alaskan king crab, right? Mm -hmm. But wait now, it wasn't the whole crab. Okay. It was a leg and a claw. So a claw and a leg. Guess how much that cost? <laughs> this one over here. Oh yeah, we could get that. A hundred and what was it? A hundred. A hundred. So that was that was their special. They had. Yeah, like, it was a special. You get like a big leg. So one, the, no. the leg is probably about the like the length from my elbow down. Yeah, that was to it. Here. Yeah. And then they had like one a claw. claw. So they said you can get that like for hundred and thirty dollars. Yeah, a hundred and thirty dollars. Listen, give me the whole damn crab, okay? That probably would have been like four hundred dollars. <laughs> but but see, but see, here's the thing: because they specialize in their seafood, right? It costs more money, right? But I said, baby, we are not spending a hundred and thirty dollars. It's only about if it's a pound of crab meat. Okay. That was a pound and a half. Okay, pound and a half. A pound and a half. That was with the shell. So right. by the time you take it out of the shell, you're looking at about a pound. Mm -hmm. $130? I don't think so. That, that was for the leg. That was your, That was considered their special. Yeah, that was with a special. With the leg and the claw. That was it. So. No, we, no sides. Right. That was it. That was what you got. I said, so. So. So we, we, we ended up just getting the but we got a No, but it was cool, though, because we got a whole... We got shrimp. Yeah. So our and it was way cheaper than one thirty. Um, because we because because the lake itself was about eighty I think eighty three dollars seventy eight seventy eight dollars like something like, like that. Like yeah. about eighty bucks. But we got it. We we hooked it up. Yeah. And we made a, like a combo. Right. And we got shrimp. Mm -hmm. We got uh the crab. We got the crab. crab we got lake. the shrimp and we got fish. And fish. And yeah. Like fries. So yeah, we made so. we made it like we 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 kind of created our own like combo oh, yeah. or whatever. But it was so. it was good. The and it ended, was good. Up, ended up just being like about hundred twenty bucks something like yeah. that for that whatever. But we but, both was in right, right, right. So it was um, it was it was just nice to experience um the 
the the genuine authentic Alaskan like crab legs. And yeah. Stuff. So that was nice. Though. It was. It it did. It it hit different. It, it, did, it hit different. It definitely tasted like, like it, you could tell it wasn't like you know frozen mm-hmm. or processed. Like they, it was like straight out of the ocean. Yeah, you can tell. Yeah, okay. It, had, it definitely had. Like no a, doubt about that. It had a different. It, it definitely a different had a different taste flavor to it. to it. Yeah. Definitely had a different taste to it. Yeah. So yeah. So that was like that at the the Skagway. Um, Brewing cool, company, man. yeah, right, right at the port, and then um, I like the fact that the vibe was cool downtown walking. So they had yeah. a lot of little, lot of little shops and stores. Boy, they have some shops. <laughs> they had a lot of little shops and stores. They even um, stop it here. What? It was, it was, it was, it was cool. It was, I, I just, I listen. I'm like this. I go in, boom, get what I want and come out. No, not this one. She goes in. Oh baby, look at this. Oh baby, look at that. See, I do that at Home Depot. All right, <laughs> uh, that's my store. Uh-huh. Okay, uh-huh. Lowe's, Home Depot. That's what I do. Uh-huh. This one. Oh baby, look at this. Isn't this cute? Oh baby, look at this. Oh, we gotta get T-shirts. Oh, we gotta get some souvenirs. Oh, we gotta get this. Oh, we need some key rings. Oh, we need this. Oh, we need that. I'm like, oh Lord Jesus, please. Oh. But it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of shops. So, it was fun though. I, because, I'm not gonna lie. It was fun. It, it's but just so, seeing her, she's like a kid in the candy it, store. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. It's so many shops and like they're you ladies, shop to your and ladies. If you love jewelry, I'm oh, trying man. to tell oh, you. I'm trying listen, to tell you. Listen, if y'all love jewelry and Pandora and Pandora, <laughs> that's the place to go. Oh my god. I, I listen. If you go into one of them shops. They gonna reel you in. They gonna throw the line out. They gonna sink it, doop, and they gonna reel you in. <laughs> and you gonna go in there, and you coming out with something. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They're they're, 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 they they are very motivated. Yes. Very motivated. So if you go in one or two, the, one and they'll make a deal with you. Right. Right. If you go in one of them stores in Skyway, especially like the jewelry stores and stuff yeah. like that, they are very motivated. So we got some great mm-hmm. buys in the jewelry stores down there. Um, because you know, Tanzanite is a big, big thing. Right. Like it's like one of those jewels that they're not sure if it's still going to be around in the next few years. So and everybody so, has it. So every so to... it's like one of those you want to like jump onto it because it's going to have a lot of value in a few years. So still got value they, a lot of the jewelry stores are like specializing in this Tanzanite and stuff. So I was like, oh my god, like it's expensive it's, I, I, too. Yeah, I was. I, I have always wanted to get some Tanzanite. Especially in the fact that it's like a rare jewel, and um, you know, and it's, not, it's you, not guaranteed to be around for a long time. Yeah, so it's the value is going to go up and more and more and yeah, more. Yeah. So anyway, I said she should have been she should have been one of the sales right? I, 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 listen, thing, I okay. say I say that to say. So we went in a few jewelry stores. So um, like I said, they they have the dance tonight. They have all this amazing jewelry, and they are very motivated. So if you go, if you ever visit. Um, especially Alaska or a store that has like Tanzanite, like they are, um, they'll work with you. Like I know where we were in, in Skagway, like everybody's pushing to sell, especially the Tanzanite because everybody wants it. Everybody wants it, but don't be intimidated by the price. Now it's, it's a pricey, like don't, but don't be intimidated by the price tag. Like I, I learned how to play the game because they, I was like, oh my God, it's beautiful. Um, but it, I'm not spending that for it. I'm not paying that for it. Um, I'll, I'll go to the next jewelry store because when I say it was an abundance of jewelry stores, like like literally like next right next door, like, to each like other. right next door to each other, across or right across the street from each yep. other, because it was a very tight knit town. So you literally can like walk across the street, and it wasn't like a big highway or nothing like that. Like you could walk across the street and feel feel safe and comfortable. But it was so many different selections that you could just pick. What store you wanted to go to, like the farm, kid like candy store, stuff, like, like literally, like I was like a kid at candy store. Yeah. So see, I, I, we got some great buys. Like I was negotiating like a mug. I'm trying to tell you, I said, um, no, no, I don't want that. Well, how about that one? They, they it was kind of like like Monty Hill, Monty Hall make a deal, pretty much. Like Monty Hall make a deal, Monty Hall make a deal, and stuff. And then, and then you know, I had to throw my two cents in. Right. Of so um, I was like, listen, uh, they, 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 they'll, they'll be like, what? That's too much. They, they'll say 
like what well, we the experience that we had it was kind of like did you like it do you love it tell me how much you willing to spend for it yep. like type of that deal. pretty much yeah so like i said we got some good some good um good buys in um downtown skagway and like on our um trip they gave they gave us like this whole map on this they gave us like this whole map of places like to go like places they recommend they've definitely made it easy for you and they were always giving away like stuff like because they like diamonds mm -hmm. international and like milano are like affiliated with like um the cruises and stuff like that and like tons of free gifts tons of free yes every store she every, went in they every, were doing a free store, charms every store you go into like they they ready to give you some free now they're gonna try to sell you something but they ready to give you something free you could just walk in though and say, mm -hmm. I'd like my free charm and they give it to you. Right. So you didn't have to buy nothing. Mm -hmm. But see, that, that's, that's that line sink boop stick. Mm -hmm. As soon as you get in there, it's like, oh my God, look at oh, 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 oh. Yeah, so yeah. But what I what but what I but something interesting that I saw when we were down here, I got to see the reindeer fur. In one of the shops we went into. The reindeer fur, they had it laid out. I think that was, the smells was getting to you or something, so you came oh, in. Oh, was that that, no, that was that, what, that wasn't It was deer. one of the stores that we went that to see. I thought it was a bear. No, mm -mm, that was bear a rain, skin. reindeer, reindeer skin, reindeer skin. Okay. Because I went in that store and I found me some, um, the huckleberry, um, honey. Oh, the huckleberry, the huckleberry honey. honey yeah, fresh yeah. from Alaska, the huckleberry. You can bring honey. it back with you, too. Right. So I, I bought some huckleberry, um, Just honey. don't, just don't put it on your carry-on. Right, I brought some huckleberry um honey from there, and they had like a um a reindeer. Yeah, yeah, I was skin, reindeer reindeer skin yeah. and stuff in there and stuff. So, um, uh, but yeah, um, Skagway, like I said, was like the warmest, and like mm -hmm. that was like a whole vibe, and they had like about like I said about thirty different excursions, so you can kind of pick your poison. It's all about what you want to do and what you want to spend. And how much you want to spend? How much you want to spend? <laughs> now, you just think. <laughs> If you got a family of four, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, those kids staying on the ship, yeah. <laughs> but nah. but 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 you didn't necessarily need to do an excursion. That That's was true. the most fantastic part about it. Yeah, you it was get out so and much to thing. do once you got off of the ship, the port. Like you could spend like a whole day just shopping in the shops. They had like nice little um ice cream shops and stuff to get your sweets. They had restaurants. They had a nice pier where you could just sit over and look at the water. So it was a lot to do. So you didn't necessarily need to like oh, do an excursion. Yeah, um, we just um preferred to do an excursion because we wanted to get way deep down out there and see what Skagway had to offer. And it did not disappoint. It really did not disappoint. Um, so on our next um, stop, we ended up doing um, Juno, right? That was Juno. Yeah. And Juno. Now Juno was a little less Chilly. less warmer. Yeah, it was. I, mean? I, I had to. Wear, I, I wore. A, well, you, but that's you had that, on a hoodie, but I did. that's only because right. we went to the glacier. Right. And right. Yeah, it was a little, little right. more windy, um, but it still was nice. I'm going to say it was about 68, 67, 68, but their 67, 68 uh -huh. is like our 60 because it's a breeze and it's no humidity, so, right. but it was nice. It, it, right. it was still nice, a little misty only because the glacier and no, the water, no, that's and when, the we, water. when we got down to the glacier. Because yeah. that's so in Juno. Oh, let me tell you. We went through yeah, the forest. But in, in Juno, let me tell you. So we <laughs> they have they have like if you see my book here, they have probably just as many excursions that they have in Skyway. Oh, no doubt. So it's probably so all these pages were just excursions that they had. It's so, about 30, 35 right. different excursions. So we decided to the do Mendenhall. the Menton Hall Glacier. Because riding, like when just riding on the ship and just looking at the Cat Mountains and the waterfalls and stuff, it's like, who wouldn't want to get as close as possible to them glaciers? Well, we were close. We were very me. close. So we up reached, front and personal. Right. We did the Mental Hall Glacier. So we that that was a bus that took you right to Mental Hall Glacier. Yeah, um, right to the glacier. So, but what I didn't realize was that once you got there. That the it walk, was, it, the oh walk, O M G. We walk through the forest, right? Woo. So wait, now think about this for a minute. <laughs> you get off the bus, right? Mm -hmm. You get off the tour bus, 
And they give you the little, oh yeah, we're going to meet you right here, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And then they, and then you see signs that say, if you see a bear, because <laughs> the bear shares mm-hmm. our walkways mm-hmm. with the forest, mm-hmm. if you see a bear, mm-hmm. make sure you call a ranger. Who the hell, what? Mm-hmm. What ranger are you going to call? Right. Like, excuse me, it's a bear. <laughs> Uh, can you come and get him, please? <laughs> He'll drag you behind in the woods. Okay, and gobbled you up. You look like, you know, a little... Nah, come on now. Nah. Uh, and you should have saw it. it. was funny because everybody's looking around as they're walking. Mm-hmm. Looking for the... Look, make sure there ain't no bears out there, right? Uh-huh. That walk was forever. I was like, listen, baby. If we got to walk any further, we turn... Now think, you got to walk... Was it about thirty minutes in before right. we got to the yeah, falls? Yeah, they, they they had they had like different Listen. trails. We took yeah. the ones that was we took about, the short trail. We took the trail that was about a thirty minute walk in, minute and then walk. you got to walk thirty minutes out. Mm-hmm. That was the short trail. Mm-hmm. The long trail was like two hours. I'm like, nah, we ain't doing that two hours, nah. Because we, I think our whole our whole excursion was only going to be about two hours. So if you imagine trying an hour and a half or something, two yeah, two nah. hours or something to even walk it. So we picked the thirty minutes. So mind you, we walked. When I say that walk hit a little different, cause yeah, was, you ain't don't walk in no flip flops. <laughs> uh uh-uh. uh. You better have on some hiking boots, some some good sneakers. Cause if listen, look. That 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 walk definitely um, yeah that different. was like walking up a mountain because it was like it yeah it was some of the some of the yeah I mean it was it was kind of like blacktop like a walkway mm-hmm. like a like a driveway would be mm-hmm. but it was some of it was a little hilly mm-hmm. but you just walking and walking and walking you seen all kinds of different species of plants and and trees. Mm-hmm. And birds in there mm-hmm. and stuff like that, and you hear all these different noises. Mm-hmm. It's cool, mm-hmm. but that walk was brutal. I was like, "Oh my god!" But once we got to yeah, the finish the, the, line, but you got to the it, finish it line. Was, it was awesome. it was so so worth it. Yeah. Um, so what I was was what, but what surprised me was that they had like a whole little beach. Area. It was yeah. It, it was like, like a, it was you like could see that you could see that they right. they made it because it's a tourist attraction. Right. They made it so it looks like you're on a sandy beach. Uh-huh. But think about Niagara Falls. If some of you have been in, yeah. Okay, so just think about um, being on a beach, and uh, think about Niagara Falls. So now. There's this Russian. It's it's a it's really a, a miniature. But I'm not gonna say miniature. A uh, Niagara Falls coming out of the mountains, right? And like I was saying, we were talking about where they just placed a lake right in the middle of of the Sahara Desert, right? Well, you you're on this beach sand, right? And then you walk over, and the the water is coming out of the mountain with such force it's like rumbling like a, like think of an earthquake you can literally walk over and be right in the falls like there's nothing keeping you from walking through it right but then you look maybe I'll say a hundred yards to your right of this falls and it's a ice glacier like frozen in time, and they said these ice glaciers can be anywhere from 500 to a thousand foot thick. And so you got water that's moving a lake, and right at the end of the lake, it's a frozen glacier. You're like, wait a minute, how could this water, how could this be frozen with moving water next to it? But that's because of the thickness. It was. It's amazing. I, I I can tell you that um, I've been on a, I've been a lot of places and we've been on quite a few cruises, and I would say that the Alaskan cruise was probably one of the best trips 
that we've taken, um, you, you, you like you have to go and experience it. Like it's something that somebody we can sit here and talk about it all day long, but to experience it is is something that you'll never forget. Like it's it's really the sights, um, the people. We even it, it, it was a whole different vibe, even with the people there. Everybody was just like willing to share information and stuff like that. But the trip was it was it was it was like very, very, very nice. Um but like I said, that that glacier, to see that it, it's so huge that you can't believe like you ever see something that just amazes you and you're like, Oh my god, it's heavenly. Mm-hmm. When you're sitting there looking at this frozen water mm-hmm. in the middle of nowhere mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you look up the mountain and you can see where that glacier started from mm-hmm. whether it's been a, 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 a land I mean a, a slide mm-hmm. where the ice just froze and it just stops mm-hmm. but you got a lake right here mm-hmm. with flowing water mm-hmm. coming out of this mountain like Niagara Falls mm-hmm. like you're saying like how could that be frozen with running water right here. It's just like somebody just animated it and stuck it right there and just said, mm-hmm. don't move. Mm-hmm. And it, it's just amazing. Mm-hmm. It, it, it really is. Like that That was like breathtaking. Yeah. And to be that close to, to it. To be that close to it. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I felt like if I was trying to be like super adventurous, I would have climbed the rocks and put my hand right through it, whatever. Yeah. But yeah. But, but I was I, saying to them that, that we were so close to the falls. Like it's almost like Niagara Falls. Just... How, um, like that right. water was running. If you got stuck in there in that undercurrent, mm-hmm. you going under. Right. You, yeah, you ain't you. That's nah. Mm-hmm. Right. But you could literally just stand on that little beach area and put your hand in the water. Yeah, but you, that's you how close it was. Rocks, but it was, but it was you got to like, climb the little was, rocks. It was, it was super. It was super close. Ain't nothing between a rock and a hard place. It but, was super close. Yeah. Um. But yeah. But um. I really appreciate the all that came in. I was give a shout out to uh Lisa. From a place for her, and Cruz Bolero, and Sonya, and Corey. Uh, we appreciate y'all for coming in, and Shaniqua. Yeah, they listen to our stories of our Alaskan adventure. Yeah, it was um, a nice adventure. Yeah, so. It was an adventure. That, 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 that was our Juno, so that's what we pretty much did in Juno. We did, went to that glacier. The walk was 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 crazy because but we did that 30 minutes we had to walk away back um and that was a little cool because we were in a, in the um near the glacier and so i did have one like a heavy like um sweat yeah, stuff so, like yeah. that um to wear um so then our next stop was the catch a can yeah <laughs> the catch a can so unlike juno and skagway catch a can that that place is different all by itself um it was very chilly very rainy and the tour guide was pretty much like this is them every day all day like they, yeah, said, they literally don't get he said it was, well remember he said he was surprised that it that it hadn't rained there that whole week except for that day for we that day well when i say we got like that whole alaska vibe because yeah. Like I uh, up up until that point, it was, it was nice. No rain. It was, it was no rain. It was like really nice. Um, so we were getting like nice warm weather, like their cause their Reason. their version of warm, you know. So for them, like 70, 67, 68 was pretty. Like, that was warm. summertime for them, right? That was like some really summertime weather for them. Um, so with Juno, like you said, we got back, um, and we were um. On the on the dock in the pier and everything. Um, so that was we went to this place um, called uh, Jellyfish Donuts. Jellyfish Donuts. So I'm not sure if anybody has ever heard of them, but they are like really um, famous in Juno. So and they have like famous prices too. So, um, like, if y'all go back and look at, um, like, some of my vlogs from, like, the different ports and stuff that we went to in Alaska, um, that's one of the places that I went into. And they had this donut called, like, a salmon donut. So, I'm not sure, like, who's a salmon fan. Here, I love salmon. 
I wasn't so sure if I really liked it on the donut though. That was that was my biggest thing. Um, so we decided could because uh, my cousin was with us, my cousin and my aunt was with us. Um, so we did like a whole taste test. So we got the salmon donut. Uh, we got what they called um, like the Oreo cookie donut, and we got the regular glaze. Now these were not just like simple donuts like you can go like into Dunkin' Donuts or something like that or wherever donut store you go and you get spend like a dollar, dollar half for a donut. Their glaze, their glaze donut was like four dollars, like four dollars for the glaze donut. That salmon donut was like ten bucks for that donut. So. We got, we decided to like get some donuts and we just, um, you know, did like a little taste test with it. Um, I pref, I really, really feel that salmon donut. It was like, I like salmon, but it was like mixed with like cream cheese and stuff like that. And I, 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 I could, I could pass on it. I could pass on it. The Oreo cookie donut was pretty good. Um, and the glaze, you know, the glaze is, is what it is. But that place was so famous that everybody literally went there just for them donuts and stuff. So if you ever go to Alaska and go to Juneau, you can check out them uh, jellyfish donuts. You know, they have a, life, a nice variety, you know. So um, you can kind of like pick what kind you want. Like the cereal donuts, like they're very creative. So I can see why they're like very popular there but um yeah I, I that that salmon donut did not do it do it for me at all um but they had a lot of nice shopping and that's where like the famous um tracy's um crab shack shack was so like um if you ever watch like like the deadliest catch or something like that um a lot of their seafood um the people that catches their seafood like it's on this big old shelf they um go out they catch it and they bring it like back to juno alaska so um you know you're getting it like fresh and live um um when i was in juno i did my own vlogging um from tracy's and they actually show you like when they have like the big crab legs out there like they cook them out like side where you can like literally literally see see them cooking these crab legs and the lines was like super, super crazy. But what I found was interesting was that their um, crab legs was probably about five bucks cheaper than the ones in Skagway. Now the, the fish company in Skagway was the popular one for Skagway, but for Juno, Tracy's was the popular one. And like when I say the line was like wrapped around and their, their crab leg was about 75 bucks. For their crab legs. Oh, you talking okay. about that? Uh, and in Juno, the one yeah, in Juno. Yeah, that one on the pier there. Right, that, that Juno, like like right. seventy five bucks for the for the crab Listen, legs. Listen, you wasn't getting in there though. Um, uh, yeah, the weight, the weight, the weight, was, the weight was a little crazy. Um, but very, very popular place, and they were like about five bucks cheaper than um the ones in Skagway. Um, but around the corner from Tracy's, they had like the the Alaska Brewer Company. They also sold Alaska Key Crab Legs. And they they probably was about 60, 68 It was close to the so, same price though. Almost the same price. So they, they're they running kind of neck and neck, you know. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell you, you do, you do get some, like, nice, fresh um, crab legs. Like, you, it's definitely a difference than getting them, like, imported and, like, sitting on ice and stuff like that. Like, or frozen. You, yeah, you can definitely, definitely, um, definitely taste the difference. But um, Juno, like I said, it was a it was a lot to do in Juno. Like that, that's the whole vibe. It's a lot of walking in the mountains. It's like literally right in the background. They have like the the zip line thing. They had the oh, um, the cable car. The cable car. Man, that thing was um, high it too. Did, it did. Yeah, yeah, it's a Buddy, lot, a lot of walking. If you scared of heights, you ain't getting on that. Right. Cause that right. elevation is crazy. Right. A lot of lot of cables and walking and stuff. Um, yeah, but. I think the most fascinating part for downtown Juno was for me was remember we was walking on the on the on the pier and they had the nails so we walked in. Oh yeah, well, I was so I was we were walking on the pier mm -hmm. and I said, Baby, what is all these nails on the pier? And I looked down, I said, 
it looks like a map, and that's what it was. Yes. It was like the map, right? Yeah, like a a map, but they put they did it with nails. Mhm. Mm yeah, they it did was, like they did like a whole map with nails on it, and it had like. Like it was longitude huge. and latitude, 360 degree, 180. It was like really interesting yeah. that somebody took that time to like they, do it, this mat. I don't know how long it took them to do that, but I can tell you what. Nails. It was intricate. Because oh, wow. yeah. it was it wasn't like like a like small, like no, it, was, it was big. It was huge. It was it had to be half the size of the pier. It was right. like it was it was huge. It was it was it was huge. It was huge. Yeah. And that was the same one they had the floating um Airplanes. Oh, the planes the in the plane, water. The planes that were on the Land water. in the water. Land in the water. So they had the airplanes that were landing because apparently um, Alaska Airlines, which we found was a fun fact. Oh, yeah. Alaska Airlines originated in Juneau. And when they started, they just had like little... Um, small commuter planes. Little small commuter planes. And they, they float on the water. They, they land. Right? They land on the water right. and to go to their little teeny pier. This is how they started because Juneau... It's like a separate island of Alaska, and they you can't don't, connect. You they can't, don't, they connect. don't have no connections. No like connections you can't to like the take islands. a road to drive into Juneau. You know, like say, um, like we're we're up north. Like we can we can take a road that'll take us North like to Maryland or, or you know Delaware, just a different yeah. like different states Not or whatever there. different cities. They're like one like little little island. Isolated so island. They're myself. isolated. I was like, the place is beautiful. But your only way in is if you fly in there. So I'm like, I don't know how I feel about that. Either you fly or you or, or boat. Yeah, fly or boat, pretty That's much. It. So you're not you're not taking no roads to get into Juno. No. You're not driving out. So, so you gotta go, and they had their own hospital. Everything. They had everything there on the island, but. You're yeah. isolated, like you're isolated. Nah, I'm cool. you're isolated. Like it's nah. no way to get in. You want to go visit there. grandma? <laughs> All right. Well, you better go down into that pier and get that boat, or you're gonna get on that bike, that little water uh, taxi, mm -hmm. or whatever. That's the only way you getting out of there. Yeah, yeah. So. I was, I, cause I, I, cause, and they, and they're big. They have a lot of like bald eagles. So when we were riding, we got that trees, part, yeah. we were riding up to um to Mending Hall. That they were like. Up in the like, trees. Every, every, everywhere you look, you all you saw was bald eagles, like all up in the trees. And the way you can spot them, the the the, uh, the driver, the bus will yeah, tell us. Yeah, because they have the you white, see the white yeah, spots yeah. in the trees. Right, that's the eagles. Right, it would they were everywhere. They were everywhere. Bald eagles. Bald, it was there everywhere. Everywhere. And um, they they are pick us a pick a rusty spot. Remember they said that their right. their nest can be up to nine foot big. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 they yeah. they they pick they pick their location. And they um, come back. They where year. where they made at where they um lay their eggs. They had, where they, they they take care of their young. Yep. And they, all you saw was these big old white spot big spots in the trees like all bald eagles. I I thought that was amazing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so but uh you know between the 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 plane floating on the water um so it's amazing how alaskan airlines so that was our first time yeah. doing alaskan airlines because alaskan airlines um are like huge now like you can literally take like a direct flight well they remember that every, they had so many alaskan. buildings in there but that alaskan right. uh, airlines even owned like we went when we were in seattle right Right, that? yeah, they 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 they're really big, like yeah. going to the, like the West Coast. Um, but but it was I I, I just love the fact that the the humble beginnings, like how they started, like how yeah. small they. It was were. like a little shack, like right. was, <laughs> I think of a building maybe fifty foot long mm -hmm. and maybe twenty foot deep. Right. That right. was their that right. was their airport. Right. They had the little biplanes, and that was it. That was Amer that was Alaska Airlines. That was Alaska Airlines. Airlines. That's so where they started. the place where they originated at, right, right on the on port of Juneau. They, so they turned it into, they turned a, it, they turned it into a museum now. Yeah, a little museum. Just a little museum. But the little commuter place, place they're, still they're still there. They're still flying. They're still flying. Because like I said, there's only one way in and out. So either you taking that little commercial plane that floats on the water or you were taking a boat. Other than that, you ain't taking no roads, no highways, nope. and all the people. Excuse that, me, sir. Can I get a yep, taxi? Yeah. Yep. All the people that's town. driving around town, the buses and the cars. You all you're doing is going around in, in circles in Juno because you ain't got nowhere else to go. And I was like, man, see, I like options. <laughs> I like options. I don't want to be nowhere where there's only one way in and one way out. 
I, I need to be able to go, especially emergency. And then if you look, like right up here, you see the big old mountains and you know how they be have like the avalanches and stuff like that. Remember and they said they have they, like, they've had a lot they, of avalanches. They have to close off some areas. They have to close off areas and stuff. Now yeah, can you imagine landslides. being down there and like big landslide happen and stuff and you, you ain't got nowhere to go? Nowhere to go. Like you stuck and suppose like you can't get a boat out or the plane, the little that little computer plane ain't stuck like Chuck. <laughs> I was like, right, beautiful I place though. It's, beautiful. Oh my god, it's amazing. So after we did Juno, that's what I said. Uh, we we jumped, kind of jumped around, but we went to Catch a Can, and Catch a Can was like very rainy. Very so they had they have they had a, like a lot of little places in Catch a Can, and their prices wasn't as bad for the um for the excursion. It, it looks like for me, but um. While I was looking through there, I was seeing something that was up to like five hundred dollars. So it depends on what you wanted to do. But our um excursion in Catch a Can was fun. Despite the rain. Despite the rain. It was the coldest time. Despite mm -hmm. the rain. We ended up going to like the Saxman Village. Um, which was um pretty much run by like the, the uh indigenous people. Um that was that was real interesting. So I'm not sure if a lot of y'all know about like the totem poles. Um, now, I will always see the totem poles, but I never, like, learned the history behind them, or I wasn't, what like, they meant. What, they, what they meant. All of them have a different right. meaning, right. Uh, a different representation, mm -hmm. and the way that they carve them, and the craftsmanship behind them is, is, like, crazy, like, and how long it, like, the, the one guy, he was saying that, uh, for some of the smaller totem poles it took like two three weeks to make them mm -hmm. and the big ones there one there was like like almost 30 foot long remember that real long right, one right and he said it takes months but it's unique of the, how they get the colors because it's not regular paint right exactly. they're using vegetable coloring right fruit coloring mm -hmm. to make these colors and it's amazing like yeah their craftsmanship is is is, is like crazy yeah, so we be actually so if you go ever go on that tour, the Saxman Village tour, it actually takes you to the village. It takes you to where they make the totem poles at. Um, like people from all over the world actually be ordering totem poles. From yeah, have this, a ship from, have, from this from this village. Yeah. And um, so we got to go actually go into the the wood shop and see the gentleman that actually like carve out the totem poles. And, and then they gave us the history on that. Some of the the uh, totem poles were, were so old that they're starting to decay, mm -hmm. and he actually replicates the original mm -hmm. totem pole mm -hmm. like to spec. Mm -hmm. Now you remember this is all hand carved. Mm -hmm. This man is whittling, literally whittling, out of a trunk, out of a yeah, tree, tree trunk, trunk. Yep. yep, and replicating. Mm -hmm. A totem pole that might be 100, 200 years old, mm -hmm. and he's duplicating it, mm -hmm. and it, it, it's amazing. Yeah, but they said how, how the, um, <laughs> how, how they used to get the paint color, like I said, from the, um, from the different vegetables and stuff. They used to have the women, like, switch the, the vegetables around in their mouth, and, like, spit off the color and all that stuff. It was, it was crazy. It was, it's like they had to be very inventive to do a lot of things back in those days and stuff. Um, but they have um, different ones and they all have some sign of significance and represent stuff, you know. Um, so it was nice to really like learn the history of the, like mm -hmm. the totem poles and what, what, the what, the mean, what they mean, the meanings of the different totem poles and stuff. So it, it gave me like a, a, a newfound appreciation for for like the art and stuff and now so now when I see a totem pole I'm like wow that is super awesome like I wonder when they were showing they had the bear right with the little ones behind it uh -huh. meant that them that that was the kids mm -hmm. or the, the generations behind them and mm -hmm. stuff it, it was interesting yeah yeah it yeah. was interesting for it, was, sure. it was very interesting so that was one of the um one of the things that I, I liked about it um. And it, it, they do have like the floating paint, the floating um planes in um Ketchup can too. Like if you wanted to get on the the, the plane, the plane. Yeah, yeah. They had those. We they saw had, them landing. Yeah, they have, they have they had they have like um excursions for that and stuff. So that was probably like one of the chilliest parts of Alaska. 
for me. Um, you know, that they were, it was like in the fifties, rainy, no sun yeah. and stuff. So it, it definitely, it definitely felt like Alaska weather. But the shopping was great. <laughs> See, you see how you see how she reverts to the shopping. You can't help it. <laughs> the shopping was nice. <laughs> so for Skagway, I love I love the fact that they had nice like jewelry stores and stuff. Sure, and they had she sure did. Because I love stopped at every one of them. Right. Oh, baby, yeah. we gotta go in there. I'm Juno, like, oh, Juno, God, Juno was Juno no. was nice for there. For Soon their, I saw their, a jewelry their store. Their t-shirts and their sweatshirts and stuff yeah. like that. So we got Soon a lot, I saw of, a jewelry lot store, of shirts like, and stuff oh like that. Lord, here we and go. catch a can. Like, it was the best of both worlds. <laughs> the best of both worlds. And they had, they had um, King Crab Legs there too. The last King Crab Legs. But we didn't get a chance to try any um, and catch a can. Because um, that was such like a short turnover. We had time to like do a little shopping. Um, do our excursion. And, and then it was like time to get back on the ship. But... The shopping, the shopping was great. Like, you got some great, great buys in uh, Alaska. So, um, I was going to show y'all this um, one little pack that I got. Matter of fact, I'm going to go grab it and show y'all what it do. Yeah. The, that little backpack. What are you talk, talking about? Catching. Oh, God. Yeah. So, we're going to go get this thing. Anyway. Yeah, she's she uh we there were definitely a lot of shopping there. Um like I said, when they reel you in, it's over. It is over. Over, over, over. And my wife likes to shop. Trust and believe me. But it's good. I mean you know, you go you go to have fun. Um just remember to take that wallet with you and that credit card because it, it's it's on and popping for sure. And so, I'm back. One of the things that I found to be very useful, especially in catch a tan, was this little thing right here. So yes. it looks like a little carry on, right? A little pouch. Now I noticed it when we were in Skagway, but I had ended up buying like this big old shopping bag and stuff. So I didn't get it, but I had my eye on it, and I come say, "Wow, that's neat." But what I used it or what I needed. So, I didn't get it. Catch a can. <laughs> we went to catch a can. And because it was so cold and rainy, I'm like, well, I know we're going to be going, like, doing shopping and stuff like that. We don't have anything to carry stuff in. So, I'm like. She had bought these shop, like, like these not, like, like, they weren't paper. They were like a, like a material type shopping bags. Mm -hmm. But. I was like, I don't want Guess who got that. caught? Guess who, so, who get, ended up carrying them? So, yeah. they had she bought this. this. So, I was like, oh, convertible there, I, said, I said, there's that bag. I said, perfect. So, let me show y'all how this thing works. So, it folds up. There's like a little, like, little cosmetic bag almost. But it folds up. Then it opens up, right? It's a whole backpack. It's like a whole, whole backpack. So, you turn it, like, inside out and look at that look at that so and boy did she fill it up listen when i say it came in handy because not only was like it wet and rainy but see how deep that is it's so so deep it's really really deep we held a lot in here and not only do you got that one section, right, the main section, but then you have another section. Look at that. A whole another section. Which is just as deep. Oh, and I'm not done. A whole nother po pocket on the side. I'm like, OMG, when I say this was probably the best investment that I made in um, Alaska. Mm -hmm. It was very, very nice. Well, he got he got to carry it around because sure he was happy. He was like, "Man, I'm so glad I thought of this." I'm like, "Yeah, honey, you, yeah, yeah." <laughs> I didn't want to get it because I was like, "We got so a backpack." He, he kept saying, "We don't need that baby." I already Why had a backpack. Like, I already had a backpack. I'm like, "But babe, she bought so much stuff, we needed it." So I ain't, yeah. and then you get the extra pocket here. So it was like it was like a win win. It was like a win win. Um, and 
it was nice it's nice and hef heavy healthy and it like it holds a lot because we had a lot of heavy stuff in there and then it has like the little um pocket holders on the top it's like very very durable very durable and it was only like 20 bucks right like 20 bucks for this thing i was like oh my god this is like one of those must-have things and then you can it's easy to like fold it back up when you're done with it so this is this is a great investment so if you ever like travel um to alaska look for one of these um like 20, they got them here they 20, got them probably got 20 them here bucks. Too. yeah and it's, it's it's very healthy and durable we had like a lot of heavy stuff in there and like i say see i'm i'm literally folding it back folding it back up like see how easy that folds up and, you, and it, it, it it's it's definitely worth every penny and it holds a lot of stuff I, I I was I I pretty much gave it the durability test, putting like load and stuff in it. She sure How, did. <laughs> see see uh. You couldn't have put a you couldn't have put a piece of paper. I in. packed every inch of this thing, okay? Every inch of this thing, I packed it, and it was super heavy, no rips, no tears, it did not break. So yeah, I just, I wanted to share this with y'all. So great great investment. So um so the last thing we um we did we went to um. Victoria. Victoria. Man, Victoria. Now, Victoria was for Ooh, Victoria reason. Victoria hit. Now, that's Canada and <laughs> British Columbia, okay? It was, listen, I had, I bought a, I bought a, I ain't going to say midway. It was a, a insulated jacket while I was on the cruise ship, mm -hmm. and it said Alaska on it. Mm -hmm. And I only bought it because the price, because that jacket here is probably 130 bucks. And I got it for 60 And I was like, ooh, I'm, I'm going to get that. Mm -hmm. Boy, am I glad I got that jack. Because when we got to Victoria, oh, my God. <laughs> now, so, you think about this. <laughs> On the East Coast, 30 degrees, 32. It ain't freezing free. I mean, it's cold, you know, but it ain't cold, cold. Because we got a little humidity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me try to tell you. Mm -hmm. 30 degrees there. Is like twenty here, uh -huh. man. Listen, let me try to tell you. It was so cold. I was like, "Oh, I'm so glad I bought this coat." Mm -hmm. And I had that thing zipped up to my neck. It was freezing. And we out there walking in the in the, on the pier. Well, well I, I feel like the timing too made a big difference because that was one of the ports that we got to. It was already about. Well, that's true too. It was late. Night. It was so late. So the sun had already went, went down. down. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, we weren't leaving till like uh, eleven thirty at night. But wait a minute. But the funny part. <laughs> let's skip all the other stuff. <laughs> the funny part. Now, now, now. See, I'm gonna show you how people don't listen. All right. Mm -hmm. Listen. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. If the cruise line, the captain tell you, we leaving the port at seven thirty, or be back on the ship by 7.30. You're behind. Better be back by 7.30. Or you getting left. Okay? Let me try to tell you. We back on the ship. We up in our room. Okay? Already. What time we had to be back on by? Well, you were supposed to be back on board by 11.30. By 11.30 so night. We, so we got off. At L830, because I think it was docked from 8 30, 11 30. So you had like a short window yeah. to hang around in British Columbia. These Canada. people decided they going to go on some, I don't know if they went on an excursion or what they did. Okay. But when I tell you 11 30 rolled around <laughs> and they were pulling the gangplank, they were moving it away from the ship. And I'm looking down out of the room and I'm like, baby. It's people standing down there on the pier over there where customs is. You got to come back up. I said, that look like people that belong on this ship. <laughs> she was like, nah, nah. I said, baby, it's too many people down there <laughs> not to be people that are supposed to be on this ship. Uh -huh. And I'm looking. And then you see two people running, right? They galloping. They like, oh, my God. Because they moving the gangplank away now, right? They got the forklift down there moving the gangplank. You see two people running. Then you see five more galloping. Then you see ten. I'm like, honey, those people belong on the ship. They get ready to get left. It must have been 30, about 30 people. 
I'm like, oh my God. So you see the guy down there telling them to move to the side. And I'm like, oh man, they might get left. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, they had to wait because there was a section of the gangplank that they had already moved. Right. For the for the you know the walkway to get back on the cruise ship, mm -hmm. so they they moved that section, and then the other forklift moved another section back, so they could get on. They were so lucky because I think if it was ten minutes later, it would have been like ah, and the and the shoot you you see the ship moving away from the pier, and they stand there and you waving by. I said, y'all got to get back on the ship. She and was I'm like, like, baby. She was like, like stop. Like, they're going to figure out what cabin I'm in. Really? Because cause our, our balcony was like literally right on the, like, the port side. And we we, we were just standing there on the balcony. Look like, at, bye. Like, 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 we literally could have had some popcorn just sit and watch. It was, and it it was, was hilarious. For reason. Because them like, people were running. Mean, they were like running. They were running for, running for dear, dear life. Like, like listen, seriously. If life. they had tripped and fell, it would have been like a, like a Laurel and Hardy movie. Because it was, I'm like, Cause you see two people first, mm -hmm. then you see five more running behind them, then you see ten people running, and then you see like I'm like, oh my god, it had to be like thirty people. I'm like, this is crazy. yeah, it was a it was a lot, especially when you had to be on board by eleven thirty. It was already like twenty minutes to yeah, twelve. We ends up, up. We ends up, yeah, I think they when I when they said eleven thirty, they meant eleven thirty. Like they were like pulling up the plant yeah. and people still running for real. It's like oh my god. And I was like, yeah, how did you stop that long? Because it was like, for a reason. Yeah, like, for we, was, we was out there. We was like, whoo, we're going to go here. We're going uh, to check, check, check out, the, check out the, stop, the shops and, you know, look at the scene, get some pictures. And we're going to get our heavy back on this boat. Because it was for a reason. It hit, like, so, so different. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, but that that was, like, probably, like, the final, um, the, the final, final destination. The final <laughs> destination. <laughs> but, um, but, but what was the... But what was the, the, the thing that like really stuck out the most? Like what was like your favorite part? Because we we talked about like the different ports that we got off at, but we didn't talk about like our first very first adventure when we went to Tracy on Ford, how we that wasn't one of those ones that you really got off the boat unless you pay like three hundred or something like a lot You're talking of about when we was going through the channel? Like, yes. Oh, like, that was Trace awesome. For, oh, my God. That was like, like it, the listen, first hit last The cruise ship captain. Yes. Let me tell you this. When you, okay, think of a, a cruise ship. Now, you're talking two, three football fields or more long, mm -hmm, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Lord knows, probably 100 foot wide. And he's taking this thing, this cruise ship, through a channel mm -hmm. in between mountains. Mm -hmm. And you look and you're like, there ain't no way in the hell <laughs> that he gonna stare that thing through this little behind channel, right? Mm -hmm. Without hitting something. Mm -hmm. Well, let me try to tell you, that's a lie. Mm -hmm. Cause when I tell you he turned that thing on a dime and gave you nine cent change, mm -hmm. I mean exactly that. Cause mm -hmm. he went through that channel like it wasn't nothing. Now he wasn't going fast. Yeah, you know, probably five, seven miles an hour, maybe, mm -hmm. if that. Mm -hmm. But he guided it through there, and when you can't, when he got to the in 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 between the channels, mm -hmm. and you start seeing the mountains like around you, like engulfing you. Yeah. And you look up and you see nothing but white cat mountains mm -hmm. and greenery. Mm -hmm. We saw a bear. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On yep. the over to the side. Over to the side. Yep. But. These mountains are, are uninhabited. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, yeah, it's, it's mm -hmm. you gotta go, you gots to go, put it on your bucket list. Mm -hmm. You have to go to Alaska at least once in your life, mm -hmm. and you have to experience it yourself because somebody telling you about it, mm -hmm. it gives it no justice. You have to experience that trip on your own mm -hmm. with your significant other or whoever, friends. Whoever, mm -hmm. but you gotta experience it. it it's yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like going to Paris is one thing. Mm -hmm. Going to Venice is another. Mm -hmm. Going to Aruba, going to see the Grand Canyon, mm -hmm. going to see you know the Eiffel Tower or something like that. But mm -hmm. go to Alaska, you will not be disappointed. No, no. And if you're gonna travel there, go between like May 
and August. And let me tell you, you know how on the East Coast it starts getting dark. Oh, around yeah, this I, time. I, I was gonna go through, gonna go through. Oh, my, I'm gonna, yo, let me read y'all the different sixteen, time, like time. almost sixteen hours of daylight. So it was like when I, my clock was all messed up because they're four hours behind us, mm -hmm. right? So at four o'clock in the morning, it was like sunny outside. And it didn't get dark until like 11 o'clock at night. It was crazy. I'm like, what? But it throws your whole clock off. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I got, I got like the different times just to give you an idea. And and for those that are still in there, could you please hit that like button for us? Um, I would definitely would appreciate it. So I'm going to just give y'all a little timeline on like how the different changes were happening while we were out there. So... So when we first got there, like the sun rising was like five, it's five thirteen in the morning. It's a, um, and then the sunset was like at nine eleven. That was on our first day. So the next day, the sun rose at five twenty eight in the morning, and the sunset at nine fifty seven. So, but, the, but it was even though the sun set, right? It, it was, was still it was light still, it was outside. Still light, and that was that was like, like the second day. So then for day three. It was the sun rose at three fifty four. Three, in the I told you, morning. four o'clock in the morning. Three fifty four in the morning. The sun had at risen. ten o'clock, and then the sun wasn't set until nine fifty six at night. Yep. So, um, but mind you, their sunset is different. Like it, it didn't get dark. No, it wasn't set. dark. It was still like light out. You yeah. know. So, so for day four. Um, the sun rose at 347. <laughs> not before 4 o'clock in the morning. 347. And the sun set 10, at 30. 10 21 p.m. At night. At night. So yes. can you imagine, like, see all that? Your clock sunlight. is all messed right. up. It's sun, like, it's at, uh, yeah. Right. And then at um, day five, the sun rose at 355. Yep. In the morning, and the sun set at 10, 10 o'clock, 10 or 06. So you can see how we were starting to dip, like as we were like getting closer and closer to like the states. Because then, uh, like our last uh stop, like not, not even our last stop, but Kessitan was like with day six when the, the sun rise at 4 or 9 in the morning, yep, so a little bit later, and, about and it's set by 9 31. So but when we got to Victoria, like that one, um, the sun set early. It was started setting about um, between eight thirty and nine o'clock. The sun had set because it was starting to get a little dark. It was it was light when we first got there, but the sun set a little earlier on that one. But we were getting closer, closer, to, you know, to um, the East Coast time. But the West Coast time, like so. But no, but see, well, yeah, yeah, well, no, because we were still on the West Coast. It was just that, so when, you, when you're in Alaska, it's a four-hour difference. Right. Okay. Right. But right. then when we got back, in, when we got to Canada, when we got to Victoria, British Columbia, we were back on the three-hour difference. So that hour made a big difference. But still, the, your, your time, you are, you'll definitely have jet lag for mm -hmm. about two or three days when you get back on the East Coast. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I was messed up for like three days. Mm -hmm. Like I was getting up, like even there, I was waking up at four o'clock in the morning because my body's used to getting up at seven, eight o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. But that's what time it was here. Mm -hmm. But it was really four there. Mm -hmm. But we were getting into bed at 12 midnight. <laughs> And I'm up at four o'clock, and I'm like, "What in the sand blaze is going on?" But to me, it was eight, because mm -hmm. my body was so used to the East Coast time, mm -hmm. and so I, I was messed up for a few days when we got back. I was like, "Oh no, I can't do this." Right. Yeah, I was up at five o'clock in the morning. She's like, "Baby, you know what time it is?" I'm like, "Uh, probably like nine o'clock in the morning," because the sun was out. Right. But it was only five o'clock, four o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh no, 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 no. Yeah, that that time, that time difference definitely yeah, hit a little, baby. a little different. I'm trying to tell you. So like, yeah, if you go, mm -hmm. don't no set your time to the time it is there, because it'll start getting your in your mind a little different. See what I did with the mistake I made was I had my watch set to the East Coast time and I didn't change it. So I'm looking at my clock and I'm like, 
Oh yeah, it's nine o'clock in the morning. No, no, baby, it's five o'clock in the morning. We, we both we both did that. I did not change yeah. my clock. I left that clock stay just. I like won't do that no more. <laughs> I was like, I wasn't changing. I wasn't changing. So when I knew if my clock said nine o'clock, then it was really. Um, but it's a I, mind. It's a mind. Yeah, I went too. four hours back. I like, oh, so it's really only three o'clock on the um on the East Coast and stuff. Yeah, but, but it's a mind thing. Though. But yeah, so but um mm. yeah, but for but far as like my favorite um things to do like um i don't know if i really have like a particular favorite i probably like going doing the um the summit was um really nice because that was um that was definitely something different and i was trying to live on the edge <laughs> you know do something wild because i'm like go big or go home um when i went to alaska i went with the mindset that i was going to uh live my best life and um be on this adventure do something different that i have never done before and i might not have ever done or thought about doing so i definitely um tried to pick things that i could be right out in the thick of it and um get to experience a lot of what alaska had to offer um and not just feel confined confined or like stuck to one different thing i, I wanted to really experience a lot i feel like if we could have like did like more than one um excursion throughout the day we probably definitely would have went for it but i at least wanted to try to do something at each port like i said we couldn't do nothing at tracy on forum but it was just the whole experience of going through the channels and being real up and close with like the glaciers and the mountains was like amazing and breathtaking it's like the beauty is like phenomenal like it's one of those things like you can't even like like picture it without seeing it you know so that was just amazing and i tried to capture it all um by doing like vlogs i did some lives um to try to um create an experience um to make you feel a part of it um to like help you follow along with the journey if that, if that makes um sense um but yeah they 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 all had something different to offer all had something different to offer um, like I said, you see my little handy dandy book. Um, this book right here, it has so many different adventures. Like it's like pick your choice of what you want to do. Pick your choice. You know, there's so many different things. Like some people went well watching. Like I like kind of regret not doing that because like the lot of feedback that I got that people saw. Oh, we did well, see some whales saw too. Saw a lot of whales. A lot of whales. Um, we were on a cruise ship. Right. right. Yeah. A lot of people said that they actually went on those excursions said they saw a lot, a lot of wells. And that was one of the ones I did not pick because I was leery because I have been on like whale watching um, excursions before, like in the States, like my husband and I. And like we, it was like one of those toss ups that you may or may not see them. And they had like the guarantee, like if you didn't see them, then they'll, you know, give you a ticket to come back. So like we did do like excursion where we, we saw like at the very last minute or something like that. So like dolphin watching, so I was like, well, I don't know, because we already did like well watching and dolphin watching, and I don't really want to pay us astronomical money to not see the wealth. But to my surprise, everybody that went yeah, said, on the, on the said that they were out there in full uh, effect. So yeah. if you know, if and when we go back, that's probably one of the things that I would want to do. Um, do the well watching to get to see them live and up close. Um, we you saw know, a lot of seals. Yeah, we saw seals like in Tracy Young Fort. They the seals were in the, the ice They were like sitting the on the ice glacier. Like I did like video of the seals just chilling out, <laughs> bathing on the on the glacier. Like it was like a whole school of them. Like I got like nine like one time and stuff. So the the seals are really really out there. They're in the waters and and um Tracy Young Fort. Um and like I said, so much water. But then you'll see like this one little. Like block, I, of, block ice of ice in, the in there, and and the seals was just chilling on it and stuff. So that was that was amazing. That was amazing to see. So it's like um, I'm trying to pick a favorite thing to do, <laughs> but it's it's kind of hard because um each each no, um it's, it's, yeah each each you part can't of, really you can't really you, right. you can't really put right. a, like what your favorite thing was because it's so much to do and to see. It's just you got listen. All I'm saying, pick up the phone, go online, and just book a trip to Alaska. 
But go during but the go, war yeah. much. Uh, if not, you're going to be wearing a uh, uh, Sub-Zero parka. Go, go okay. during the warm months. So, um, um, pretty much, you know, they say May through August, but June. June, definitely. June, June. The end of June to, like, probably, like, the first and second week of August is probably the best ideal time to go. Because after that, like, it starts to get, like... Really, okay. really cold. Um, their days is not as long. Like right. we, we went during their their sixteen hour days of uh, sunlight, so, which which was nice. Hours. Yeah, which was which was really nice. And we yeah. went during their warm. I life. remember too that yeah. that season is they get six months of daylight. Right. Cause the, all the six months is dark. A dark. Dark is dark. dark. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. So that so we definitely recommend that you go um, during. That time, their their peak summertime, and um, yeah, but uh, that was a little bit of our Alaska talk. So we really didn't get a chance to really talk about our adventure and things we like and stuff like that. Um, people, a lot of people were asking, um, how was how was Alaska? How was your trip? And talking about it really didn't do a lot of justice for us. <laughs> like. It's like one of those things like Jack, you really, really had to be there. And like, it's like uh, Charlie said, everybody should at least try it like once. But go yeah. when it's warmer, especially if you're afraid of like going on a colder months and stuff like that. Um, yeah. The, that's the time you want to go like during like June, July, or August and stuff, you know. And then, mm -hmm. you know, your spring's warm. Because I know some people live where it's warm all the time. And some people, you know, already live where it's cold and don't want to go where it's cold and stuff. But. I appreciate y'all for for joining in on our live about um our Alaska talk and y'all y'all can go back and check out a lot of the amazing adventure and like really be in the thick and be up close with a lot of um things that we did and um check out some of the scenery and stuff um you know go on the journey um with us and um you know kind of kind of get an idea of what it's like. But that's going to be it for our live for the night. And I really uh, appreciate y'all for joining in. Yep. And everybody have a good night. See ya. Deuces. <laughs>